Um, so why don't we get why don't we get started? Um, first of all, thank you all for joining. Thank you, Lydia, for for coming in, in as a guest on such short notice. Um, everybody in this group is encouraged to bring guests. Uh, you know, invite guests uh, who you think might be a good addition to the the trusted referral network, um, or might get some value out of it. Um, as you've all noticed, we've we've shrunk a little bit since uh, we turned on the uh, the subscriptions, um, or when the trial ended. But um, I think the group that we have is sort of more committed and to the the group and building it and making it work for them. Um, so also looking for uh, people to uh, potentially head up chapters uh, in either a regional area, or it could be other some other affinity, right? It could be an industry or whatever. Um, so if you have any interest in doing that, would love to talk to you. Uh, and let's let's get started. Let me for the for the benefit of Lydia, um, our guest, uh, this is the trusted referral network. Um, we're a network of just marketing services providers, uh, almost well, everybody's Pretty much part of a small group, either independent uh, or up to let's say twenty people. Um, and the concept is we all have our niche uh, and all have opportunities to uh, refer business, collaborate in other ways, subcontract with others in the group. But you got to build that trust. You got to get to know people, uh, understand where their skills lie, and that's what these meetings are all about. Um, so they're introductory. Um, people will tell you what they do, as you will uh, tell us. Uh, and, um, you know, we'll do a little bit of brainstorming if we have some time. Um, but we always start with a, a showcase. Uh, and Rochelle has volunteered to uh, give us a showcase um, on what she does and a workshop that she is launching. And she's, I guess, it's a workshop she's had for a while, but uh, she's doing another launch. Maybe she's tweaked it a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. okay. All so about. I'm, I'm going to give you the 15 minute timer. Um, and if you'd like to share your screen or whatever, um, just take no. it away. Go I, for I, it. I'm one of these veterans that still work with a flip chart, but that's another story. Okay, I'm Rochelle with dynamic business growth, and I think you know, I always say it's dynamic business growth and not schlep along business growth. Now, what's going on is that companies just have a hard time speaking about their business. Very often they are common, long-winded, boring, and that's when I'm complimenting them. So there are times that, let me tell you, I tune out and I'm sure so many others do as well. You know, many years ago, a really good friend of mine invited me to a breakfast where he was presenting. And he said, you know, Rachel, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. And this was, I mean, I have to give him credit. It was in the insurance industry. And he said, you know, like, what'd you think about that? And I said, if I had the ability to give you a summons, I would. <laughs> to get people up at seven o'clock in the morning to come in and to listen to that is painful. I mean, you, I mean, you literally deserve a summons for that. That's how awful it was. So like, what happens? What are people, what goes on when it comes to presenting? So I want to give you like a couple of kind of metaphors that I talk about. There are what I consider there are two types. Let, let's use this as an idea. There are two types of architects. There's an architect that can put up a four family house. Now, of course, you all have to imagine because my artistic skills are slim to none. So there's an architect that can put up a four family house. But then there's the architect that puts up the Freedom Tower. What's the difference? Needless to say, expertise, needless to say, experience, needless to say, the pay scale is very, very different. Now, I find that most of the companies that I work with, they present themselves like this four family house in Brooklyn, but they have Freedom Tower skills. And because of them, what happens? They're not getting paid. So when this happens, this is what well, this is what I suggest. There's like four types of stores. There's Walmart. Macy's, Bloomingdale's, and Saks Fifth Avenue. Now, when you're presenting yourself like this four-family house in Brooklyn, you're charging between Walmart and Lower Macy's. 
and you have these extraordinary skills where you should be charging Bloomingdale Saks Fifth Avenue. But you can't do it unless I know what you do. And I always say, are you storytelling or boring telling? And what's in the story? The story is, how do you pull a rabbit out of a hat? What is the problem that you solve? So if you have a real, what I call a migraine problem, you're going to get like major money. But you got to present yourself like this. You can't be generic. You can't speak like everybody else. You can't say that, you know what, I'm going to have a volume business. We can create a volume business. We're small. We're independent. I can't have 3,000 accounts like Walmart can. Walmart can make 25 cents an item because they have, you know, 3 million dozen. We don't have that kind of volume. We have to get really clear who's our ideal client and who can pay these, what I call Upper Bloomingdale's Lower Saks Avenue rates. And we can do that very easily if we are tuned into our Freedom Tower skills and articulate specifically what that is to the client and how do they benefit. So that's, now does anybody have any questions with that while, while I go? Yeah, by the way, yeah, you're okay. You're okay with people uh, chiming in or raising your hand, chime whatever. In. Okay. Chime in. So what I like to think is that there are, let me just go over there. There are three parts to a pitch. Three, and it's called the power of the three C's. Number one is you got to catch someone's attention. We've got to say something immediately that, that creates interest. Number two, we have to tell a compelling story. And number but three, you've got to have a call to action. If you don't tell somebody what to do, they won't do anything. So that's the three parts to a pitch. So I want to give you some examples of how I've turned things around just from the catch. So ages ago, I worked with a, I have a very good friend of mine. She did a marketing campaign for a doctor's service. And she said, you know, how did it go? And he said, it went terrific. I got like 80, um, 80 inquiries. 80 people called up. So, whoa, eight, not bad. What was your conversion rate? And he said, zero. Excuse me? Zero. You have 80 calls and you have zero conversion rate. So, Rochelle, so this person says, you know what? I'm going to sick Rochelle on you. So, I went in there and I said, like, what is going on here? Like, what's happening? So, they start off by saying, a person says, you know, what the, you know, do you take um, free consultations? And they said, no. And they hung up. And then they said, you know, do you take insurance? And they said, no. And they hung up. Unacceptable. So now when somebody called, they say, do you have a complimentary session? They now say, no, what we do have what's called, we have a discovery session. Where through this session, we will look through your entire history of treatment and pinpoint where you did not get treated, what service you did not get, and because of that, you're still in agony. Notice the word I use, agony, not pain. So they said, excuse me, you can figure that out? Yes. Guess what? They came in. Then they said, well, do you accept insurance? And they said, you know what? Our clients, a very large percentage of our clients has out-of-network coverage. And if you have that, there is reimbursement. They're not saying that everybody does. But now let's look at the doctor. The doctor said, you know, he didn't, he spoke doctor. So I spoke to him and I says, you know, and he told me like he, he treats people. And I said, you know what, when these people are coming in in agony, how long does it take for you to move the needle from a 10 to like a six? And he said, or a five. And he said about six to seven weeks. I said, are you serious? You can tell somebody that's a 10 and bring them down to a five and a six and as little as six and seven weeks. And he goes, yeah. And then he says, but I really want them to create a, I want them to do maintenance with me. I said, maintenance? I don't pay for maintenance. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, when I hear the word maintenance, I smell Clorox. I think of somebody mopping a floor. So we rearranged it. And he says, you know, this is the way it turned out. And he says, you know what? I have a diagnostic evaluation where we will notice where you did not get treated and it's still in agony. Then I have the treatment we're over six weeks, I will bring your pain level down to a, you know, a five or a six. And most important is that we have a momentum program so that on our watch, you're not going to revert to that same level of pain, not on my watch. 
his, you know, from the momentum, he used to get three out of 10. Now we get six, six or seven out of 10 and people are coming into his door. So that all because he's now showing his Freedom Tower skills. Notice he's using different vocabulary. You're in agony. They say, yeah, I am. Language is important. Language is really important. What are your Freedom Tower skills that you're not highlighting, that you're not getting paid for? There was somebody else that I worked with in marketing, and she did the most extraordinary presentations. And she had a flat fee, which I thought was crazy because her clients were very high end. So she was doing a presentation that was um, that was for a client that they were doing it to to um, at a conference where all the marketers were like, you know, going to pitch business, you know, all the all the um, all the advertising agencies. So if the advertising agency had the Home Depot account, the Walmart, they were all there. They were using this presentation to pitch business. So they're using this presentation twice a year for two years. This particular PowerPoint was equivalent to bring in millions of dollars of revenue. Millions. So how do you only charge $8,000 or $10,000 for that? Like what? You're giving them a presentation that's responsible for millions of dollars of revenue and you're charging 10 grand? I said, are you hallucinating? No. And I rewrote exactly what she has to say. Now we've recreated an entire intake. So what are they using it for? How long? How many people? What's the end result? And she's charging like God knows how much more money. I have a high-end financial person that does extraordinary tax responsibilities. I can't even go into that. He's undercharging. So I've rewritten his pitch so that he can get the, what he he has such Freedom Tower skills, but he's not charging Freedom Tower. And you won't unless you speak that. So the point is your language and your stories tell me what you can do. And then and the key is you want to create interest. And that interest can literally turn into I can't even tell you how much money. So right now I'm working with a group of people. I'm do, I'm working with an attorney that's great. He's in immigration. I'm doing amazing stuff there. My next cohort, which I'd like to do in November, I'm looking for five attorneys, if anybody would know. And then ideally in January, I'm going to do another one that's going to be mixed with, um, you know, different industries. And I want to I want to tell you some other things. This is what I've heard. And I, with no due respect, this is what I've heard, which I don't think works in our group. People have been calling themselves um, um, fractional CMOs. Well, that's great. In the in the marketing community, we know what you're talking about. But the outside community? What's a fractional CMO? Do you do frac? I don't know what the heck you're talking. What, what what's fractional? You only do. I don't get it. And the other one that somebody said, which I thought was great, is that they said it's you know they do fiduciary marketing. The hell is that? It's a sexy word. It makes you seem like you're at you're working at a Wall Street for do what? But what does it mean to me with my checkbook? When we identify ourselves by a title, I don't get to see the problem that you solve. And because of that, you've got to speak into the problem of the person that's got your credit card. So although it sounds interesting and it really sounds sexy, I'm not sure that it converts. I'd rather somebody tell me the, the marketing problem that they're up against and what are they doing regarding that problem? So for example, David, I don't even know how long ago you had mentioned a story that you took like a startup and then it sold and it became like, you know, the biggest success story ever. That has stayed with me, I can't even tell you. That showed me your Freedom Tower skills. So if something comes up under the technology umbrella, I can't wait to send that to you because I understand this person can handle it with grace. And I'm gonna look like a hero. I just think that very often when we're um when we're when we're working and we're networking, I can find the idiots on my own. I love it when somebody can vet it for me. So if I can vet something for somebody, I look like the hero and they're excited. 
So what are our freedom tower skills so that we can get clear on the on the story that we told so that somebody's going to remember us? We have to go from unclear. When you're fiduciary, you're unclear to unforgettable. I want to know that story that you that I'm going to remember that story that's now I may not know exactly, but your position here. And I'd love to send referrals because I know that you're extraordinary and you're going to be able to do a great job for somebody. And I it's it's such a win win. I look so, great. And so, they Michelle, look. you have you have two minutes left. Do you want to take questions? Any other you... questions that anybody might want to uh, ask? Uh, What's fiduciary see. marketing? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the process, Rochelle. What what is it? What does it look like when you start with with a lawyer, for example, or well, or how how is it best to introduce you? The process is the first thing I start with. Believe it or not, is positioning because people aren't clear what their freedom to have a skill is. We start with the positioning, and I pull out what do you, what's your high level skill? What's the problem that you solve? From that, we create the catch, the compel. And the most important thing about this is that I work. This is not um, do it yourself. This is I do it with you. And that's the most powerful thing. Because if I just gave somebody a template and they had to fill in the template, it wouldn't work. So I, we create, I work. It's a six week program, it's an hour and 15 minutes each week. We break this down and at the end we pull it together. Each week we work on a different part. And at the end we work on the speaking of it because this is a speaking exercise, not a writing exercise. This is not to have a great exercise and it's sexy and it winds up in a notebook. This is speaking. So I work with somebody on the pit, the pitch, the tonality, the speed, all of that. Lydia has a question. Okay, Lydia, sorry. Do you also work with accountants? Yes. So my question is, um, the if you're doing another, if you're doing a cohort now, uh, you're between tax seasons, and I'm just thinking maybe it would be, you know, you could get, uh, you could fill it up very quickly with accounting firms versus lawyers because lawyers are always available. Accountants have very limited windows of availability for, and they know that they need courses like I'm, yours that's it Ta um, accountants would probably go in my mixed group it wouldn't only be accountants but that's a, that's something to think about thank you thank you i could probably get together five accounts thank you wonderful um, i've worked with accountants in the past thank you rochelle always dynamic uh lydia did have a question about fiduciary marketing yes it was somebody it was a term that i think matt silverman came up with um, and uh, Matt is based in Atlanta, uh, and he does a whole range of marketing services. But he was saying that he, um, a, f a fiduciary has to take, you know, in in the financial world, has to look out for the interests of their client first in terms of their money, uh, before they take any commissions themselves. So, uh, or they take any fees. So there's different rules with respect to uh, how they get paid. Uh, and he was, I think he was trying to get across that he's uh, always looking out for the interest, the financial interests of his clients ahead of his own. So to speak. They get paid only like you get paid only when they do well. So it's something like that. Right. It's less paid based on results, not just your your weekly bill. Right. Right. Um, so thank you, Rochelle. Thank um, you why don't we we've got plenty of time we could um we could go around the the uh, horn um and um hold on i'm gonna put in the let's see rochelle already went so i'm gonna take you and put you last um so david john here i'll put it in the chat chat everyone so david libby john parsons then lydia uh then nicholas and then i will go at the end um and i will let's say we got three minutes um tell us what you do what you do uniquely um, how you can help others uh, and if there's something if you could tell a story about you know that rabbit that you pulled out of a hat um <laughs> that would be helpful uh or uh, something that will help us remember you for 
what your expertise is uh, in some other way. So I'm going to also move it back to the speaker gallery. So if everyone else would go on mute, uh, that way the speaker will show up full screen. Um, but let me also bring up my apps so I can set the timer. I'll set the timer to three minutes. Um, and I still think we'll have time at the end. Um, but uh, David Libby, why don't you uh, why don't you get started? Sounds good. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Rochelle. That was very articulate, just very clear and just to the point. That's really helpful for me to help you find people to work with. So thank you for that. And welcome, Lydia. Uh, I'm David Libby with twopins.com. That's the number two P-I-N-Z dot com. And the catch, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> you know, I often think that what we do is we're we're the people that are that are giving our clients water. Like they 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 come to us so thirsty. They they haven't had any water and they're and they they haven't they don't realize how important water is to them. And and the meanwhile, their competitors are drinking water. Their glasses are full. They they've got pitches on the table, and they're wondering, you know, why are they why are our our prospect crawling on the floor? And what we're what we're saying to them is, you can fill your glass too. But you need to you need to do it in a strategic way, and so we raise the brand awareness of our B two B and B two B technology companies, startups and mid sized companies, through public relations and content by helping raise their brand awareness. So, for example, we had a client who was a cybersecurity company, and their competitors were beating them by twenty five percent, meaning that. The competition share of voice was 25% more than theirs. They came to us and asked us how we could help improve that. Having not launched a product in a long time and launching a product that got launched last year. And we said, if, you, if you're going to this major conference already, which they were, you can relaunch a product that was launched last year because you have a new iteration of it. And the people that wrote about that product last year already proved to you they write about these kinds of products and by launching yours this year, you're essentially saying you have a new product. Okay, they said. They launched the product at the RSA Security Conference, and they expected nothing. And we got them six placements in publications that write about their specific product to that specific audience. That helped them raise their sure voice up to 25% within two months. And so what are we looking for? We're looking for introductions to technology startups, technology mid-sized companies. Usually we connect with the CMOs, the CEOs, the heads of marketing, and we help run their public relations campaigns and their content writing, articles, blog posts, and sales enablement materials. Wonderful and good timing. And by the way, um, everybody should drop their contact information in the chat so that we can download it at the end. Uh, and I will uh, ask if folks want to pick up on what David picked up on and do that, do your presentation with a catch, a compelling story and a call to action. If uh, I have you a can quick do question. It. David, um, when you're dealing with startups, I'm surprised because how do they, do they have budget? Yeah, because we're, we're dealing with startups that are funded. So instead of saying we work with people that are a team of 10 to 20, we're saying we're working with companies that have raised at least 2 million in funding to 5 million. And so, yeah, and they're, they're already in the competitive landscape. And, and, you know, we're not asking $20,000 a month. We have, we each have 20 plus years, almost 30 plus years of experience, but we're, it's it, we're gifting essentially our experience at, uh, a lower rate than what these mid-sized and large agencies are doing. And we give um, the same value with a smaller I think, team. I think Rochelle says, is thinking that you could probably charge more, but anyway, let's move on. John yes, Parsons. She would say that you would also. That. <laughs> Thanks Michael. Um, Ro Rochelle, I, I agree with you about the word fractional. Um, I, I write for a living. And when somebody says they're a fractional something, I know what they mean. But what it says to my mind is they're less than whatever it is. I'm less than a marketing manager because I'm only fractional. But I'm, I'm a word getting guy. a fraction of their server. Yeah. Yeah, you're not getting. It's, there's some trade-off that doesn't look good. Um, yeah. So I'm 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 a 
professional ghostwriter. I've been a writer for years. Uh, I wrote, I write on obscure subjects like this guy right here. Um, <laughs> and so, but the, but the funny thing about my business is that I write books that, or one book in particular I wrote that had a whole slew of videos attached to it. And my two sons who are good designers and videographers were charitably say volunteered to help me with a book I wrote in 2018. Uh, that had about 300 videos that needed to be curated, edited, put into an interactive platform. And as a result of that experience, which was positive, um, they we decided as a, as a family to start a video production company. So we do video for small businesses and startups. Um, David and I worked together to bring some some of our, our clientele through, through him, through TRN. So um, our ideal clients are people who are looking for more, more video content and written content to fill their marketing funnel. And we tailor the video to whatever level of the sales funnel that, that's appropriate. So something that's geared for, to, for awareness uh, is a different kind of video than something uh, that's closer to a decision, something that's more like a case study or an interview, some social proof uh, concept. And we do ex uh, in the middle of the funnel kind of stuff that we did for um, David's uh, referral is more of an explainer video, what it is that they do. So we use animation, we use technology to, to describe what it is that, and it was, a, it was a data security company, actually, network security company. And how do you explain that? In, how do you explain that visually was our challenge. And that's, how, and that's what we do. You want to talk at all about your book trailers? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, well, because, partly because I have all kinds of connections in the publishing world. Um, the, not my authors yet, but you know, actually one author of mine did this. Uh, but we do promotional videos, what, nine, 60 to 90 second videos for upcoming books, books that are about to be released. And even though they come at the beginning of the sales cycle, they're called trailers for reasons that are too lengthy to describe. Um, but they're little movies. We do. Um, we ask the we ask the author, "What are three questions that your business book answers?" And then I put my guys to work, and they try to make a visually interesting story about. Yeah, I have this problem, and I have this problem, and I, I just came out with another one, by the way. So I'll we, we they just produced one for a business book, and I'll put the portfolio page back in the in the chat. Uh, it's the second one, I think where we had to describe uh, some, what, what does a balanced business look like? So we used animation and humor to show what it isn't, what a, what a balanced business is not. And then of course the book has the answer and that was the, that's the, it's just been released actually, actually as of today. The Congratulations, book. all right. So you know that Matthew Sawyer, who was a member, uh, came out with a book called Make It in America, maybe about a year ago. I don't know if that's too late. No. Um, and then Kat Krieger, used to be Krieger. Um, she changed her name. She's also just coming out with a book. She's the one that does um, uh, trauma-informed marketing, something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember Kat, um, but I can. Yeah, if you would, that would be great. Uh, what but I'll trauma-informed put... marketing? What the heck is that? <laughs> it's yeah. when it's when when you talk about pain rochelle that or agony that that's that's that sounds like what it's what it's all about i think trauma informed maybe messaging or something or customer experience or something along those lines oh, radical okay. customer experiences or customer oh, oh, oh medical customer okay Ra radical yeah. radical oh okay because if not it was medical, medical then it would be actually a literal trauma not right right, not right. Marked. this is Drama. Yeah. All right. Let's yeah, thank you. It could be an emotional trauma, but yeah. 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 But I think Go it's ahead emotional. And send me trauma. those, Michael. That'd be great. What was the title? Uh, um, I think oh well the first guy is it's his Matthew Sawyer and it's Make It in America. Yeah. And then Kat Kat Krieger, who was a member. Um I don't know. She just came out with a book. Uh hold on, let me see if I can find her because she did change her name from Krieger to something else. Uh, yeah, Cat Cannon. It's now Cat Cannon. Um, and she just came out with a book as well. And I, I'd have to look it up. Um, but oh, anyway, I'll well, put. No, I was. I missed what you were. How you were talking about trauma in marketing. 
Oh, well, her, her business revolves around what she's, it's, it's sort of radical customer experience is her business, but she comes at it from an, uh, a background in helping people understand that their customers, many of their customers have sensitivities due to whatever, various potential traumas, uh, things like uh, people having lost loved ones during the pandemic. And so if you're going to do a Happy Mother's Day card, you have to consider that many people may have lost their mother, that sort of thing to, to be sensitive to uh, people's traumas. Got it. Uh, so at least that's my understanding. I may have gotten it all wrong, but uh, it would be your turn now, Lydia. So take it away. Okay. With that being said, um, so Ventive, if you've looked at my post in the chat, is I'm describing it as a complete RevOps CRM solution. Uh, and the reason I'm calling it that and positioning it as that, even though RevOps is has not hit a tipping point yet as a commonly uh, known term is that it combine it includes all of the marketing, sales, customer success, and support and operations tools in one seamless platform. So it's a single sign-on. It's a single user experience. It's a single source of truth to build, manage, and grow a business. It is no code customization. And every account includes every feature because we believe in giving even the smallest businesses a level playing field with access to the tools they need to grow. Um, so it, the pricing is based on the number of contacts, active con valid contacts and seats. And it starts at $150 a month for a thousand contacts and two seats. It uh, does scale to uh, serve enterprise level companies. Um, I think the largest user for this right now is the city of Phoenix, Arizona, and they have about 300 seats. Uh, we started as an ESP back in 2001 and have evolved and grown from that, adding CRM functionality and more, uh, more tools at at the request and suggestion of customers as well as uh, internal the internal team. Uh, so there's nothing like it on the market. Uh, and it is it's been described as your forever CRM, actually by another CRM provider who has an entry level CRM for um, blue collar companies. Um, I, my tagline is, it's not more than you need, it's more than you thought possible. Uh, Lead Sherlock is new technology that uh, is a snippet of code that you drop into a website and it identifies up to 30% of anonymous traffic and tells you exactly who the person is, their phone number, their email, company, company address, LinkedIn profile, other demographic and firmographic data, as well as pages visited, time spent on the site. So now it's a warm call that you're making, not a cold call. Right. So those are two different businesses. Um, one, the complete RevOps CRM solution. And the other is discovering who is visiting your website, at least 30% of them, um, anon people who would otherwise be anonymous. Right. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. Uh, Nicholas Rontanini. Rontanini. You still with us, Nicholas? Uh, yes, I am. I'm sorry. My Go mouse is... Uh, Go for my it. My mouse doesn't want to cooperate with me today. My name is Nicholas Rontanini. Uh, I'm, curr I'm currently an Innovation Lab producer at R-Square Media and original content producer. I have experience with both written, uh, written long form and short form content, as well as video production. I I help support your online reputation through original content creation. Uh, I've created content for R for companies such as R Square Media, 
uh, Lily Launch Tools, Connect Day Strategic Solutions, Adelphi University, Cash Map Consulting. So I so I've been around the board. I've been around the board and I know what I'm doing. So if you're looking for someone who will help will help support your online reputation and and boost your brand identity, then I'm your man. All right. So uh, Nicholas is doing some work with uh, at least two people in the in the trusted referral network. Cool. Um, I will go, and that gives us, and we'll have a fair another twenty minutes or so. Um, at the end, I'll give myself a uh, a timer as well, and I'm going to try to uh, to follow the catch, compel, and call to action. Um, so, what do you do if you've got a uh, a conundrum, a problem that you think can be solved with software, but you don't know who to turn to. Um, well, you won't go to Ghostbusters, you come to me. Um, maybe I should call myself Software Busters uh, because software is, it's, it's confusing. It's, it's, it's you know, very people, it, it's, it's intangible, um, but it's what drives everything. Um, I have a background. I have a software engineering degree and a business degree. I've been on the technology side, I'm sorry, the business side of technology my entire career. And my job is to match you and your need with the right team. And I have a dozen teams that I work with. A lot of the work we do is in the marketing world. But I had a call today um, from with uh, somebody else in the network, Keith Reynolds, um, who has a a prospect who runs a staffing agency. Uh, and he wants to, he was thinking about doing, developing some software. Uh, and I'm thinking, well, before the call, you know, there's lots of staff, you know, staffing software solutions, right? Recruiting company software solutions out there. So I was curious as to what he was thinking. Uh, so we got on the call and he told me, yes, he is using a, a software solution, but He's got a very specific business. He um, uh, he places nurses and hospital staff into short-term positions. So it's either travel positions where they travel to you know another hospital for three months, um, or it's it filling in like the next week. We need somebody you know Tuesdays uh, and and Thursdays from five p.m. until midnight, that type of thing, and. Um, yeah, people, you know, that's, it's a very different type of matching than a permanent job. So what he's looking for is a way to automate that. So people can say, I'm available these times and the agencies can say, or the, the hospitals can say, this is what I'm looking for. So now I have a very good understanding of what they need. And I do have a team that does work in the healthcare space. They do work with, with, um, uh, uh, salesforce.com so they can integrate it into his core systems, core staffing systems, but they can also build out the custom the custom application. So that's probably the team I'm going to bring. Uh, we'll figure out if uh, if they could do it within the budget. And uh, that's where my that's where my magic comes in. It's making those matches so that you know you don't regret having hired the wrong team. Okay. And uh, I think Rajiv just joined. Uh, I'm going to go to gallery mode. Rajiv, um, do you want to do your three-minute pitch? Sure. Uh, thank you, Michael. Great to be here. I just got done with the call, so that's why I arrived uh, a little bit later than typical. So as you can see from my Zoom background, I'm the friendly neighborhood assassin. And you might say, what is an assassin doing at TRN? Well, there's a lot of crime that's happening on the internet. Crime that in, that involves people throwing mud and maligning you online, and they're dragging you through the mud. And what happens is that people see that and then think the worst of you because they what whatever they see on Google they take as gospel truth, and as a consequence of that, uh, it these are some things that could happen. You don't get hired. You don't get promoted. People, deals start not closing. Your kids come home asking you, Daddy, what does the douchebag mean? Uh, <laughs> and things like that. Uh, and worst of all, 
you don't get a date, right? So all of this can be solved. It's easy. You hire the friendly neighborhood assassin who will handle all your problems and erase those nasty, scandalous uh, stories uh, that your haters are posting about you. And you can go back to your life as you once knew it. And we have a very easy model, success guaranteed or your money back. If we can get it erased, we'll erase it. If we can't get it erased for a variety of reasons, we'll suppress it. One way or the other is going to get handled. My ask for the group is uh, we want to meet with agency partners who usually white label our service. You get paid, we get paid, the client gets taken care of, everyone's happy. That's what I call a win-win-win arrangement, and that's the only kind of arrangement that I'm really interested about. On the flip side of that, I also do product launch. Uh, what some of you may not know is that I help Unilever get into the Guinness Book of Records by creating their most successful campaign in the history of their campaign for Lipton Green Tea. The campaign was so successful that the product sold out nationally in retail and wholesale twice back to back. And this has never happened in that product category or in the history of Unilever. The part that got Unilever into the Guinness Book of Records was our innovation, where we created the world's largest online collaborative jigsaw puzzle, which got Unilever into the Guinness Book of Records. At the height of the campaign, that innovation had 300,000 active users at a given point in time during the height of the campaign, ran for about three to six months. And uh, that's, I guess, one thing that perhaps you may not have known about me. Uh, and I, we have a software called Lily Launch Tools that helps you launch anything better, faster, and smoother. I'll put the link in the chat. Uh, feel free to take it for a test drive and let me know how you like it. We're five-star rated everywhere. I'm sure you'll absolutely love it. I'm confident about it. Uh, I'll leave it there. Thanks again, Michael. Oh, you're on mute, Michael. Yes, yes. My partner walked in, so she was making a little noise. So I, uh, I shut myself on mute. So now we're back in gallery mode, and we do have about 13 minutes. Um, anybody want to bring up a topic or a problem that they're facing that uh, we can get you can get some input on? Yeah, I'm actually curious. This is. I do a lot of Zoom calls, and I think a lot of you do too, mm -hmm. right? And I'm looking at this screen here, and if anyone asked me what Rajiv does, I would say he erases scandal from Google. I just think that is awesome that you added that because that has not been on there. You've always been assassin for hire, but I don't know what your company name is. I just know your name. But into it, into ideas, I think, John, your name is there. I think smartly because it's hard to spell, right? I always get it wrong. Let's just put it that way. And then, Michael, your business says what you do, Trust of Referral Network. But I'm wondering, do I need my logo behind me? Do I need to have a little tagline? You know, is a Rochelle, is that a catch? So, yeah, it's so, helpful. David, uh, I think the, the answer, I guess we're speaking at the same time, but uh, I guess the, the answer really is what are you expecting to achieve from the Zoom background? Are you expecting for A, for your video tile to be noticed in a crowded room? Is that what you're expecting? Or are you expecting for it to do something for you when you're in a one-on-one -on -one with someone such that even before you're engaging in them with conversation, them looking at your Zoom background gives them a sense of who you are, what you do, but more importantly, how they can benefit. So it kind of just depends on that. And based on what you say, I can then share further input, but then I'll... I'll hand over to John, who I think is equally excited at helping you out. <laughs> well, it, it depends on the context. If you're in a, 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 a referral me meeting and you're not in the habit of looking to the chat and, and saving the chat, then you miss a lot of stuff. And you may not get, if it's a large meeting, you may not get to that person in a one-on-one. -on -one, so you miss the opportunity. But then you can go to the other extreme of being too promotional in a meeting that doesn't is more about just more about fellowship, I guess you'd call it. Um, I, I use I, I, what I what you see on my screen is is actually a foreground that I use um, in a different in a different software. Uh, but what I often do because the the into ideas is our brand. If it's appropriate, if it's if it's not appropriate, I can turn it off uh, so we can just have a one on one. 
But I also have a practical thing where we talk about interactive video and somebody says, well, what's that? And I tell, I pop this onto the screen and they can scan their, um, scan and, and, and see examples of our interactive video. But you have to be careful because you can crowd the screen and look like a newscast when you're really sort of trying. It, it's like the person who has a who has a really fancy business card and they can't they they constantly throw it push it in your face when what you really want is the eye contact and and the and the connection. Um, so it's a it's it's a mixed bag. If you put something in your background, I've I worked with a guy, or I had a a, a group meeting with someone who always had himself on the bridge of the enterprise from the next generation. And I thought, well, that's amusing, but you know, it gets old really fast and it's a little bit, a little bit sophomoric. And so you have to, you have to judge your background or your foreground um, based on what you want to communicate because it's your face. That's the most important thing in the, and your voice. So practicing yeah. good, Zoom etiquette and, and remembering to take yourself off mute is much more important than, than the commercial. Hey, Rochelle, you're on mute. Rochelle, you're on mute. I'm the only person I think I think living that uses flip charts. The reason I do it is because it's interactive and people um, I get people can it's interactive instead of just look, looking at a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Now, because my background has my flip charts, people remember me because of it. it you know, remember I say go from unclear to unforgettable. I mean, and I do some videos with a company called Video Socials. Like I'm the only one that does flip charts and I'm remembered by that. And sometimes depending upon what I'm training with in my flip charts here, somebody will ask me, me like Rochelle, what what are you what's going on over there? What tell me about that flip chart? And I do this whole thing about I go into companies and, and I untangle something, and I have a whole thing about untangling. So it 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 prevent it, it provokes questions. So and 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 sometimes I don't think it's too distracting. It's you know two flip charts, and I, people ask me all the time like, what is that? Now, needless to say, my artwork is not distracting. <laughs> so. Um, so it it just uh, yeah. leaves, and it's it's I guess it's congruent with what I do because I do train, and this is an example of what I train, so people can connect with me accordingly. So I think that for me that it works for me. I think that I have to be careful when somebody has a background, and I've seen it also when there's a lot of clutter, like you see the desk that looks like. Have you ever seen that with people? Like what is going on there? Like you want to call them like a clutter concern or a maid. I mean, like what the heck is going on in that apartment? So it depends if you are working. Exactly. Not, so, not so bad. No, not bad at all. But I've seen things that are pretty um, distracting. So I just think that I don't think your background could, could be distracting. And here's, this is a personal pet peeve of mine, and I'm probably the only one that has it. We're here for do business. So when a lot of people have the, you know, the Hawaii in the background or the Aruba, the, the Aruba beach, or I just think it's off, it's off theme. Right. If I was a travel agent, it's perfect. Then I would want like Hawaii in the background. But if I'm talking to you about a marketing campaign, I'm being distracted by the ocean and the sunset and the, you know, so I just think you want to hold people's attention not cause, I mean, we have such a bad idea of attention span to begin with. So why give it to somebody else? So that's my thought about that. You know, beaches don't do it for me. I like the city, feel that we're in an urban, but we don't want to be just, I just don't think we should be distracting. Yeah, yeah I, so, uh, I, Rochelle, yeah, yeah I'm going to, play like sort of like the devil's advocate and vehemently disagree with everything that he just <laughs> said. Well, not everything, but the beaches part. And uh, essentially the feedback that I've received from many people, both in interview settings, as well as in business development settings, is that like, for example, I'll kind of like show you what I mean. So I have a kind of like a classic beach background that either is this or this or this. And the feedback that I received is like when this background is on, it puts people at ease because it's very soothing. It's it's like scenic. There's no information. Yes, it's there. personal, 
uh, first yeah, of all, so- it's, it's moving, and I'm getting and I'm getting motion sickness, no less. So, right. again, so we have to. It depends who you're dealing with and what your what your environment is. That's all. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we have- had a client call. We had a client call. We represent Lean Data and do their analyst relations. You know, big revenue operations company. I know for sure Lydia knows, and a very important meeting, like the senior analysts and a cat walked by in my background. And then another cat walked by, different cat. And then another, we have three cats. The other cat walked by. Then the two cats started fighting in the background. Everybody burst out laughing. <laughs> it was, I mean, like, you think it's funny, and it is now. But then I was, I was like, oh my gosh, here I had this beautiful background of our dining living room and it was all nice and stuff. And no, it needs to be static, like, like, yeah, I mean, I, I think the uh, the virtual backgrounds are pretty good. I mean, the easiest, it's, I think, the easiest to produce what John has with the foreground. It does require some more sophisticated software with the background. You basically just, you know, use paint mm-hmm. and, yeah, and you know, find yeah, some. I do scan, but yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, John. Uh, it, it's, it's all about uh, learning this tool for the first time in a lot of cases. And if everybody remembers when PowerPoint and Persuasion came out, people were using everything that it could do to produce garbage. And right. th- they had transitions because they were fun to do. And people were, were adding these to presentations. They had red type on blue backgrounds and nobody could read it. I remember my first look at, at all this Persuasion. And it, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to learn this again, learn presentation skills. And the, the danger is we lose. <laughs> okay, I, I'll, I'll do you one better. Um, so the, 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 the problem is we do, we, we, we like playing with this stuff and the software companies have given it to us, um, given us the tools and without the aesthetic, you know, design training that not hardly any of us have, we're going to do this stuff. We're going to make mistakes. I think the, the key for me has been Focus on the people, on the individual. Um, right. Rochelle, a friend of mine who I wrote a book for, uses flip charts all the time in these big uh, pharma presentations. And he has a camera, a separate camera set up for the, for the flip chart. But if it's not genuine, if it's not him actually conveying the information and connecting with a virtual audience, uh, no technique is going to be, is going to percent rule the day. It, it's, it's memorable because no, but hardly anybody does it. But it's also something that doesn't work if you're not if you're not paying attention to the, the first thing, which is personal dynamics, who you are, um, remembering not to stare at the camera, but to but glance at the camera when you're making a point, and then look at the audience of your your nine pack or your your twelve pack of people, because that's what you would do in a real situation. You would you would in an audience you wouldn't stand in front of one person and stare at them, because that would be weird. Um, but you do want to find out oh. George, you're having a problem. Do you, do you you look like you're confused? Can I explain something? And so, we're, but we're learning it. It's all brand new. Since, well, for most of us, since COVID, it's been this new thing we've been thrown into. Right. All right. We're we're at the top of the hour. Just a few minutes left. I uh, Lydia had a question. She's looking for input. Um, Rajiv wants to know what's the ask. So maybe you guys can connect. So now would be a good time to download the chat, Lydia, and everybody Everybody else here knows everybody else pretty much, but we don't all know Lydia. So if you've put your information in there, download the chat. If you don't remember, you just go to the chat window, three dots, um, and the first thing is save chat. Um, so I want to thank you all. Definitely invite guests. Those, those are the people that uh, ultimately become members uh, and will expand our community. Uh, Also, if anybody has any interest in talking to me about leading a chapter um, where you sort of make the chapter in your own image, uh, the way you would want to have a chapter, um, the uh, I guess the constraints are it still needs to be within the marketing world um, and U.S. and and Canada are where we are right now. Uh, So but I am open to ideas and always looking for ways that we can improve the group. Uh, make it more dynamic, interactive, uh, and generate business for everyone. So I will wind it up at that. Thank you all for coming. Lydia, thank you for coming as a guest. If you have an interest in coming back uh, as a guest, please do. And uh, if you want to become a member, let's talk.
or a sponsor in this case, since you have a product. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Mark. And thank yep. you, Rochelle, Thanks, for everybody. the presentation. Bye-bye now.